So in today's episode, you're gonna see quite a bit of carpentry and also we're gonna catch up with Greg and have a chat with him about the tiling. But before we get into the video, just another reminder that pretty soon we've got the big announcement come in. I'll keep going on about it. You're probably sick of it by now, but when it gets here, you'll be more than happy that I kept reminding you. It's gonna be epic. Stay tuned and enjoy the show. We've got Pete here. And Alex and Joe, we've got lots going on and pretty sorry state these old floorboards are. So we'll just whip these up. Fox is doing an amazing job of levelling the seam out because if you can remember there was a massive bulge here. It's our days, it's not yours. Yeah, yeah, we got abs on that, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gunaiden YouTube and welcome along to another day on site. So we've got lots going on. We've got the plasterers back. Morning guys. Morning. We've got Pete here and Alex and Joe. Boom. We've got lots going on. So yesterday everything got wrapped up in here pretty much. We're ready for Potsy. He's going to start getting all the bits dabbed in here and then this room is good to go and skimmed up. Me and Pete are just about to get this door frame fitted in this opening and then get the sill boards on as well. And then in the bathroom, the guys are just mixing up in here at the minute. We will be getting these walls battened as well today. Alex and Joe, once they've got these little bits boarded, are gonna go upstairs and start in the dormer. They're gonna get the insulation done and start plasterboarding up there as well. But for now, what we've got to do, we've got to get this frame trimmed down slightly because it's a little bit oversized for the opening. So we do have to trim a couple of mil off either side just to make sure it fits. And then me and Pete are gonna get it fitted, aren't we Pete? Yes. Me and Pete are gonna move into here and start getting in these buttons up the wall. You can see the wall is here. It's massively out. There's a big belly sort of over this area here, so we've had to bring it out quite a bit, but we will get over it. We'll make it way, won't we, Pete? Yeah, it'll be so much more. Yeah, so we've got our laser set up. It's our laser, it's not yours. Yeah, yeah, we've got our... abs on that, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Morning YouTube, I'm going for it straight up English today. Well, actually, somebody put in the comments on one of the other videos to say good day. So good day. I think we've already done good day, haven't we? All right, YouTube. How's it going? Welcome along to Monday morning on site. So first thing you notice is the client has been decorating. So the ceiling in here is now looking epic. We set the tower scaffold for them over the weekend. And they've got a good few coats on that. You can see now just how it's going to look. It looks pretty epic. What we've got going on today, Pete is just making a frame up for in here. So this will be a cupboard. It was originally just going to be open, but we're going to put a door on it because obviously it's an air cupboard. You've got a shower room in here. There's going to be lots of condensation. It makes sense to have a little door in there. So the clients are going to have a bifold door in here. So Pete is just machining it now, the lining, which will fit around here. We're going to go for a full width. Rather than just putting a normal lining in and then plastering it to it, we're going to put a full width lining in there because it just looks a lot better. Joe's just mixing me up some bonding now that I'm going to get in here to get this nice and flat because obviously we can't do any wedging or packing off this because it's not the best. So we're going to make it nice and flat so Pete can wedge off that and get everything in nicely. Also what we're going to do on here, the client's requested we put in some additional insulation in between these buttons just to basically give a bit more insulated properties in here really. Obviously we're going to put insulated board on here anyway but we can get away with putting an additional 25 mil in here because these are 25 mil buttons so we're going to get that over the whole wall in here and then the insulated board can go on there we can get our silver board on get our reveals dabbed in and then this is good to go the plasterers are in again today they're going to start wrapping this room up today get as much soon as they can in here and then tomorrow they will drop into here and get this all done there's a bit of bonding that needs doing it there i don't know if you can see a little bit of a bulge in the ceiling there I know a GoPro makes it a little bit more weird and round looking because of the lens on it, the wide angle lens, but that is pretty bad. There's a massive bulge in there. So you're gonna have to get that bonded out as well to get this nice and flat because obviously that wall there is gonna be tiled and this bit here is gonna be tiled as well. So floor to ceiling as well. So you're gonna obviously see that a mile off. Even if it's painted, you see it, but it's gonna be made even worse with tiles. So that's gonna be bonded out to make this nice and flat. So there's plenty to crack on with in here as well. Uh, Joe and Alex are going to be upstairs getting the floor down. Joe's getting the mix on. I need to crack on. Let's do this.
Right, so we're up in the dormer now, and what we're gonna do is get the rest of these floorboards lifted. Originally, they weren't gonna be, basically this floor was gonna be patched in, um, but we've had a discussion with the client, and you can see, in a pretty sorry state these old floorboards are. And because we're using this tongue and groove board, we're just gonna basically take these few boards up here, relatively easy to, well, very easy to do, because they're all cut there, they're all cut there. So we'll just whip these up. We're gonna save a few, because there's a bit of remedial work that needs doing in here, just to piece everything together really, and make sure the floor is nice in there. And then we're gonna sail this floor right the way through, so they've got a nice floor, which is all the same throughout here. So we're just gonna get this whipped up now, and then we can start to get some of these boards down. Tuna Chim YouTube, that's Korean for good morning. Oh, I'm getting pretty good at this multilingual stuff, and I? <laughs> Even if I do say so myself, I've probably said it already, but. So yesterday, me, Pete, Tony, and the tall carpenter, shout out Dal, hope you're watching, mate. It was great to spend the day with you. Yesterday, we were at the UK Construction Week at the NEC for the Timber Expo. I'm sure you've seen the video already. If you haven't, it'll be up there somewhere, the link to it. It's a really good day out, so I'd recommend watching that. While I was away, the guys were busy, the plasterers have absolutely smashed it down here. So this room is pretty much complete now. You can see in here now how this is gonna work with our doors. We're gonna use some eight and four sheets of MDF to basically create a larder over here. Uh, we're gonna put a, a sliding right rail system at the top there. That's why we've got this PSC at the back and then the doors will slide in to here when they're closed and they'll finish seamlessly behind this. So the effect is basically gonna be that this will just look like a wall when it's all closed. That's why we've done the plastering like this. So there's going to be no architrave around this edge. So everything will be painted in the same and it will look basically just like a wall when it's all closed. In here is also done. Parks has done an amazing job of levelling the scene out because if you can remember there was a massive bulge here. with well, this shot up there and shot up there and also over here. So it's got that all bonded out and got this all skimmed. We've skimmed where we need to be on these walls as well. Basically that's all being tiled across there and we're being tiled up to about here, just past the shower tray. So that's all that needs to be done there. We have got a lining to get in, in here, but obviously pretty much gonna be the open size here. So we've just got pots to skim this anyway. So then when the lining goes in, the outer tray will obviously cover any joint there. And this wall has been skimmed as well. We've just got this one left to do here. I'm just gonna get the windowsill sorted for that. And then that can be stuck in and then everything else can be dabbed in and then that wall is done. And then in this room, we are ready. Floor screening guys are coming on Monday to get this floor scarified, ready for Greg next week. So then on Tuesday, the plumbers are gonna come and get that tray in over there, ready for Greg to tile up to. So that's why that's not in yet, but that is next on the hit list. Good morning guys and welcome along to another day on site. So there's a few days I didn't do some filming last week so I'm gonna just take you on a little walk around and show you what has been going on. In here we've got our door frame in. It's been fixed through the wall here and also the glazers came, took out the glazing up here and fixed through into that. So it is actually a wooden frame in there. Uh, in between the two aluminium windows, but this is what the client has specified. They wanted this, so this is what they've got. They're gonna have a wooden door in here with a cap clock in, so we'll be getting that fitted soon. All the plastering in here is now done. You can see the client has been busy decorating as well, so this is looking very nice now. Uh, into the shower room, started doing some of the tanking in here and what will be where the shower is going to go. The plumbers are coming tomorrow to get the shower tray fitted, ready for Greg to come tiling on Wednesday. So as soon as that is in, I can then get the tanking finished around here as well and that internal corner. I didn't want to just drop it halfway because obviously more joints is more chance of leakage. So I was just going to get that all dropped in in one go. Plastering is all finished in this room, but no decoration yet. 
still waiting for it to dry because obviously, if you remember, there was a bit of bonding that needed, well, a lot, a lot of bonding that needed to do in there. So you can see that's still very wet there. It's still going to take a while to dry out. But Potsy has managed to get this bang on nice and level all the way around now. Now, linings are in, in here. There's going to be a bifold door in here as well because obviously we're a bit tight for space in this little area. Our concrete guy's in. Morning, mate. He's just in scarifying the floor. So obviously, once this floor gets poured, there's a bit of a, a sheen to it, a bit of latent on top. So the guys just come in with their big sander and basically sand it all down, hoover it all out, and then that's going to be ready then for Greg. Obviously, it needs priming first, some of our acrylic prime on that, and then it will all get primed up, and then Greg can start getting his matting down in here. All the decoration is done as well, so you can see just how big this place really is now. Let's go outside and I'll show you. So now the scaffold is down. It looks like that. Once the doors are in, that is going to look absolutely mint. We're well chuffed with this. Will's just up there now. We're just going to get the soffit board on across the underneath there so we can get our vent detail in with our lead work as well. Hi, Pete. Hi. Pete is just Hi. happy Monday. Yeah. Let's go and see Pete. Let's see what knowledge Pete's got to share with us this morning. What's Pete's uh, tip of the day? About what? Anything. Um, don't eat yellow snow. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very good advice for a Monday morning. Do not eat yellow snow, especially as we're coming into winter. That's, that's, it. Yeah, yeah. that's it. It's not lemon. It's not lemon flavour. It's not lemon flavour. <laughs> <laughs> Pete and Alex are just going to start getting the soffit board run round all the way around here because the renderers need that on before they start rendering. So we're going to get some time lapses up and we're going to start doing some work. So I'm just gonna show you the detail of what we're doing up here. You can see that we're fitting our soffit board and we've left a gap in the middle. The reason is, if you remember, we've cut a groove in the back of the fascia. So the tongue of this actually fits into there, into the groove. Uh, and then what we're gonna do, because obviously they all need to lock together, we've actually channeled the back of the board out of this middle board, which is going in. So we can literally just do that and then push it straight up. And then it can be fixed in place. And then if there is ever any expansion or contraction, everything will be covered. You won't see any gaps. You won't see this ply through the soffit board at all. Because obviously you've got the thickness of the tongue on both sides to, to contract before you actually see any of that through there. So the chances of that happening are pretty damn slim. Also what we're gonna do is fit this vent. This vent's gonna sit in here like so. And then we're gonna put another course of tiles on here with some lead that will dress down underneath this. And then what that does, the felt here will be cut back a little bit as well and then that allows for our airflow to go down here straight down and through the vents at the bottom so it keeps the dormer nice and dry and we'll never sweat that's what we're doing isn't it well yeah 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 that's what we do. <laughs> Right, next up we've got the tray. The tray has now been installed by the plumber. It's bang on level where it needs to be, so we are happy with that. So now I can finish off with my tank in. So you can see the bits that I did the other day. And now I need to do is get this internal corner on and then obviously seal around the edge of the tray and get my internal corner in there as well. So what I've done is I've put this blue tape around the perimeter of the tray. And what that does is make sure that I get none of the tanking stuff on the tray so it will be seen after it's tiled so i've left enough gap there so the tile will sit snugly on top of that the tanking will just sit just behind that once the tiling is done before obviously it gets silicon around the bottom this can then be cut all the way across here peel this back and then the tanking is obviously going to lap then between this point and up the wall so that's going to prevent any water penetration going through there because you're going to have obviously the silicon that will run across the bottom of the tile 
that will keep that all sealed in nicely. Then you'll peel this away. The reason we have this here is obviously when I'm painting the tank and stuff on this stuff, I don't want it to get on the tray because it will mark it. And so it will just obviously seal in the areas that are needed to be sealed. And then when we cut it and peel the tape out of the way, it'll just be a nice finish. The tray will just be there, left exposed as it should be. So that is why I'm doing that. We've got this preformed internal corner as well, which is really good because it's obviously not going to leak in the internals. And then we can just trim it off as well. Same when all the other tape gets trimmed off, that will get trimmed off as well. And then that just sits in there like that. This tape here just runs along the tray into that, into that, and then up this internal corner as well. So I'm going to get on get it painted on and get everything stuck in place. So when you're installing this tank in, basically this is elements board, which we, we've told you loads of times before. And this is the stuff that they use to seal it. It's elements pro seal. And then you have this stuff as well, which is the tape. So it's really important when you're doing this, get loads of the pro seal into the area that you're gonna do, because this is effectively the glue for it. And when it dries, it also forms like a waterproof membrane as well. If you're going to the extent of tanking and you want to make sure that you, you do it properly and you put enough enough on there because obviously you want it to do the job that it's intended for. It's important obviously to get this as flat as possible as well. You don't want any lumps in it or bumps in it because otherwise when you come to tile it's going to cause you issues. You want the surface to be as flat as possible when tiling. So you can see I've just given it a coat and I'm just going over it again with a little bit more a nice thick coat, also make sure you get right down in this corner because you haven't got much coverage at the bottom here so you want to make sure that you've got plenty of glue in there. This is why we put the tape down so you can just be a bit liberal with this and get it on and not have to worry about getting it on the tray. Covering over the, uh, the corner piece as well, look. Obviously the screen will come up here anyway so this is going to be outside so you're not going to get any water there but just to make sure the tape's stuck and it's we're well covered. We've got our tape and everything down, we've got our glue down, we can just go straight ahead with this. There is a, an inside and outside, so the inside is the, the rubbery bit and the outside is the felty bit. So we're just going to lay that on now. It's a good idea to wear gloves when using this stuff as well. And you're just going to push that up and you want to try and get this as straight as possible. Okay, so once it's on, give it a little push in with your fingers top tip for you. You know how we like doing our top tips. This is John's top tip. This is a silicon smoothing tool, but you can use it for this as well. So just get your finger in the corner to hold the tape and just use this to gently smooth the tape out. And you can see it just pushes any bubbles out that you might have. It also helps to smooth out the adhesive behind it. You can see that we're doing this here. It's just pushing these bubbles out, so if it had left that, it might cause a bit of a problem when we came to tie them. Now I'm just going to put a bit more pressure on the down bit as well, on the bottom bit. It also just gives you a nice tight corner as well. And then once you've done that and smooth that all in, then give it another nice coat. The Pro Seal, straight over like this. bottom as well obviously this is all going to be cut off afterwards once the tiles are down you can just trim it off at the front and then you will never know any of this is there you'll never see it so now what I've got to do is get this internal corner done and this shower tray is tanked and ready for Greg to come tomorrow That is it, we're all tanked in now. So all my internal corners are done. I've got my tape down to protect the tray. This internal corner is done here as well. And then all the other areas. I'm not going all the way across here because the shower is finishing there. So it's pretty pointless doing all of these. Uh, obviously I've done to this joint, but we've just gone through with elements board all the way just for ease of tiling. Just makes Greg's life easier. He can just go straight over the whole thing now, as is. We'll have to do a little bit of prep work here before Greg can actually tile because of the fresh plaster. So we'll need to score that and obviously prime it with some, uh, some acrylic primer before he tiles. But apart from that, that is now ready to rock and roll for Greg tomorrow. Boom, that's one job off the hit list. Next up, floors. So we've got some different areas around such as this, so you remember this is going to be a cupboard in here. Uh, obviously we've got difference in floor heights. The original floor height of the property is pretty much 
all over the place. It's really bad to be honest. It is an old house, so you expect that, but it's really bad. The difference just from here to there is like nearly 10 mil. So we've got a bit of making up to do. Um, so I'm just going to basically take this board off, get this area in here flooded with self leveling compound. Got a bit of prep work to do across here, just tapping some of these this tops of these bricks off just so we can get this nice and level through here as well uh, and then there's a few more bits started around like the threshold over there as well that we've got to sort out and there's a bit in there that joe's just knocking away at now that's got to be done too so that is next on the hit list right so i've got all my floor areas prepped they're all over here that's doing i've done a little boundary here because that's where the tiles are going to go to and also there's parquet floor on the other side of that button so what I don't want to happen is the latex to run over to get under the floor and inside because it may lift it and it's going to cause issues. So I've just put my little barrier in there. That also gives Greg something to tile up to. That's the nice little line there where it needs to be. And then we've got our channel cut in here. Cut that in the floor. So the channels that are going to basically guide these doors will be recessed into the floor. So it'll just be seamless through with the tile. This bit's done over here and uh, we've done in here as well. And also the threshold over by the door that Pete's put loads of stuff all over. That is, uh, <laughs> that's all ready to go. So I'm gonna get the latex mixed up. So I'm gonna be using a new product today, SMS30. So it's a self leveling screed, latex, whatever you wanna call it. And it goes from three to 30 mil. So I'm gonna give it a go today. We'll get it mixed up now. I'll get it poured in and see how I find it. Good morning guys and welcome along to another day on site. Hi mate. Alright yeah. mate, how's it going? Sure, yeah, yeah, you're doing a nice job in here mate. Thanks mate. I'm liking the uh, the bond as well, what sort of bond is that? That is the third strong. Yeah, just measure the tie out, it's easy. Just literally work out what third is. It's 163 mil with these. Right. So just set the lasers up. You've got two lasers on the go. Uh, that's about the both the wall as well, if you noticed. Are they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What well. you got that for? Should have got a Makita one, mate. Makita don't do it, so they, they have some like two blokes. They send a bit of string. <laughs> it's wired. But anyway, it's blue string now. So yeah, just set two lasers up. It's going to make life loads easier. Slow start yesterday, just with the first couple of rows. You got to set up, haven't you? So it's always it's, a bit slower to start. We haven't got the doors in, unfortunately. But obviously, you've set this up for me, which is bang on. So it's just making sure I am clock on, so when the doors do turn up, just. Pop straight in. So yeah, just to make sure we were bang on for that, then we had a really good afternoon. So, got all the matting down yesterday in here. Uh, got obviously to where we got to, which is about to start again. And we're just mounting through the boot room today. Get this mounted, tile the rest of this, set this expansion joint up. Yeah, so why have we got an expansion joint going in here, haven't we? Why is that great? Yeah, it's because we're longer than seven meters, mate. Because that's eight, I can't remember what's now, it's 8.4, 8 8 Yeah, it's just meters. over eight meters, isn't yeah, it? From yeah, the big doors there through to this door here, yeah. which is going to be going in there on that ply. So once you go past seven meters, you've got to put an expansion joint in. So the natural place to put it here is where your pocket doors are going. Yeah, it'll so, be disguised nicely then across the floor, yeah, won't exactly. it? Exactly. So later on, obviously, myself and you will work out exactly where this is going to go. We'll try and hit the center of the door here for our expansion, which is going to be sort of somewhere around my toe ish. Mm -hmm. Ish. But we'll work that out later, bang on. Put a bit of timber in there, I'll cut up to it nice, polish the edges and then settle that. And yeah, that'll look mint and then we'll just continue because the orientation is changing. Yeah, so we've got this angle obviously is offset to this room here. Which I'm ecstatic about, but... You'll make it look amazing, obviously. Uh, we'll, we'll have a go, mate, we'll have a go. We'll have yes. a go. But yeah, we'll turn it, it will look mint to be fair. Once we've got it, and we've turned it, it's going really, really good, but we'll square this room up then, work our way off the expansion joint, fully at 90 degrees, and then yeah, but we're going to try, try and carry the bond through and the pattern through as best way I can. So that's where the lasers do come in handy, but I say we'll worry about that later. Good man. Ooh, right, man. Greg, right, we'll leave you to crack on. Thanks, you got plenty to get on with, yeah, and you've got about a million cuts to do down here now, haven't you? I've only got a few, yeah. That'll keep you busy. <laughs> right. On with the time lapse and some work. We don't want to keep Greg any longer. He doesn't like talking, do you, Greg? I hate him. <laughs> Good morning, guys, and welcome along to another day on site. So, 
with one thing and another. I've had to have quite a few days off since the last time we did any filming. A lot has gone on and it's pretty exciting. So first thing you can notice is the rendering. The rendering has been done. Obviously all the scaffold is down. Drama is all in as well, fully instated. Looking absolutely brilliant. Second fix has been done externally. We've got these windows coming next Friday. So obviously the renderers couldn't finish round because obviously we need to get the frame in that hole. So they couldn't do that. So once that is all in, the renderers will come back then and just finish these two cheeks off. But that is looking absolutely mint. All the renderings done around there as well. Will is just up on the roof at the minute. I'll show you why in a second. We'll get there, we'll get there. So yeah, that's the outside. And then in here, plastering has been going on, painting has been going on. So this is all looking good. The uh, manifold's in back to the wall. We're gonna start getting some units in there soon. There's gonna be like a little bench across here and a fridge and some more units and stuff in the here as well. We're gonna be making some doors as well, which are gonna go across here for our large units, some sliding doors, which will just slide across nicely. So we've got the door on in here and this is the shower room. So we've got the shower installed. We've got the basin and the toilet. Greg's lovely tiles are all obviously covered over at the minute by our board. Joe's just finishing off the architrave. Yeah. And the skirt here in this room. This, little, this is going to be basically an airing cupboard. This room is near enough finished to be completely honest. We're just basically doing the last few bits in here. And then this can be all taken out, fully cleaned down and then handed over because we've got to rip out the bathroom upstairs. So this will then be handed over to the client as a, a working bathroom. So next up, the kitchen, not much has changed in here because we're basically where we can be until the kitchen comes. So it's basically just been used as timber storage at the minute and a bit of a, a workshop area. The lights, yay, we've got light in, woo! Across here, this is where our LED strip is sitting. So there's like a little detail in there. At the top of there, there's a nice LED strip which sits all the way across, runs right the way across on both sides as well. So when that's turned on, that basically illuminates up the ceiling, up this wall to ceiling. It looks really, really epic, it is cool. Stairs are in, all the spindles are in, the handrails are on, obviously it's all covered at the minute because we've got clustering going on. We've still got to get the nor caps on, but that will be done once, you know, we're, once we're nearly where we need to be. Uh, Pete, while I was away as well, has got this bulkhead sorted out. And then this had to be obviously adapted to make sure we've got the correct clearance for building control to make sure that nobody bangs their head when they're walking up and down the stairs. So that's come out quite nice. Got a nice little detail here again, so we haven't got any sharp edges, so nobody's gonna, gonna smack their head or anything like that on there. We've overboarded the ceiling in here and over skim that. And then obviously this is the bathroom, which is in there, which is gonna be ripped out once the shower room is done. Well, it's just currently upstairs. So this morning we've been making a bit of a hole in the roof. So what's gonna happen is, just here where the screw is sticking out, you can just see there, there's gonna be a sun tunnel, which is that. So what that is, is basically a slightly opaque uh, lens over the top of that. That will sit in the ceiling. And then there's basically a tube which comes straight out to there, through there, and then there's gonna be obviously light, sunlight comes in and it's gonna help illuminate this landing, make it a lot lighter in here, because there's obviously no natural light that can get in there. What happens is, Will's gonna fit that bit in there then. See that bit there. That's like a little cowl which sits over the back of this window, this light. Uh, and then that allows for extraction from the bathroom, which will come over there and go straight in there and then vent out the roof, which is a really good thing from Velix. But yeah, that, that's about it for now. Um, like you can see, we've made some excellent progress. So, that's it. I spoke for like seven minutes now, so I'm gonna shut up and do some work to get on with it. So my job is to make a shroud for this, where our pan connector goes into the floor. Obviously you've got your rubber bung which goes into the four inch pipe beneath the ground. Um, and we need to obviously tidy this up a little bit. So I'm just gonna make a nice wooden shroud which is gonna cover this completely. Just look tidy and just clean it up basically. Got myself a nice bit of PSC. Use my compass, definitely worth having in your kit. This here is gonna be the hole in which the pan connector will fit through. And then obviously this shroud then will cover over the rubber. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna obviously have to split this. The skirting will sit basically like that. I'll make it all round first and then I'll cut the back of it off, cut it in half. It will just sit around like this and just form a nice shroud and basically just cover that rubber bung up. So I'm just gonna jigsaw this out now, use my router to clean it up nicely, put a bit of a detail on it, get all this cut out and then we can get it on. Let's do it.
So here is my nearly completed bit. So you can see now what I'm aiming towards. So what I'm gonna do, like I mentioned, imagine that's the skirting. I will just basically trim that to suit like that. So my circle will be trimmed off at the back so it sits tight against the skirting. And then what I'll do, I'll just split it here so then I can just clamp it either side of our pan connector. And then I'll just also recess this here so where that rubber seal is that was sitting up, up, up off the tile, that will just sit inside there. And then this will sit now flat onto the tile. I'll just get it cut and then get it fitted because I can't see another decorator. I'll let them paint it up before I put it in and actually fix it in properly. But that's just going to tidy it up a bit nicer, make it look a bit more presentable. Right, so this is my little shroud completed. You can see that I've chopped the back off, so the skirting will sit here. And then I've cut it in half because obviously we've got a round pipe and trying to get that on there wouldn't work. So let's go and see if it fits. So that is going to slot in like that. Nice, and then that is going to slot in around the other side. You can basically see all we'll do then, we'll just fix that together, screw it back in nicely, get it all nice and snug, and that's it. It's ready just to be decorated, and it just covers all that up basically. It's nice and easy to do, and just nice and effective. Cool, job done, on to the next one. Right guys, that's it. Another day is done. We've had a very good day. I've got that door finished and fitted. I have got that all lipped up and started sanding that down. Joe has been smashing out the skirting. Loads of skirting done over there, over there, over there. Got all that in place now. Will has been busy as well. He's been upstairs. Let's go and see what he's been doing. So Will has been in here getting all that knocked off. So this room is now ready for plastering. There's a little bit of plaster just to tap off here, just to make sure we're nice and solid. So we're gonna have elements board on there and there. There's a bath going in here, vanity unit to go back here and toilet in that corner there. We have got a vent pipe to go up in the corner as well, which will be boxed in, in line with the reveal. So it just looks nice and tidy really. It's time to go home and recuperate, ready for action tomorrow. See you then.